Welcome to the Love and Light Live podcast, empowering crystal lovers to learn and experience the art of crystal healing. Get ready to listen in and follow your soul calling with crystals. Hello, and thank you so much for joining me for the Love and Light Live podcast brought to you by loveandlightschool.com. I'm your host, Ashley Levy, and this podcast is the number one place for all things crystals. In today's show, we'll explore crystals for the goddess Bridget and the triple aspects of her flame for health, hearth, and forge. And we'll do this just in time for one of Bridget's very special days, the holiday of Imbolc. Now, just an FYI, This is going to be a little bit longer discussion than a lot of our main topics. So for this week, I'll be skipping our Ask Me Anything segment and our Trending This Week segment to make sure that you have plenty of time to tune in and learn all about these amazing crystals for the goddess Bridget. Discover how you can deepen your spiritual journey and follow your soul calling with crystals. The Love and Light School's award-winning crystal healing certification program opens soon. Go to crystalhealerschool.com. The goddess Bridget is associated with Imbolc. This is the time when we celebrate her as a bringer of light. February 1st is Imbolc here in the Northern Hemisphere, and it's the first of the cross quarter days, which marks the beginning of spring. We're not quite fully into spring yet, especially not here in Wisconsin where I live. There is a little bit of snow on the ground. It's definitely blustery and cold, but in more temperate climates like Ireland, the British Isles, and mainland Europe, spring is definitely starting to make its presence known by February 1st. The origins of Imbolc are connected to the lambing season or the calving period when animals would be giving milk. And so it's the beginning of spring sowing of the ancient Celts. Imbolc celebrates the first inklings of spring and welcomes new growth and the return of warmth to the land after we've made our way through the darkest and coldest of the winter months. This day is an important celebration of hearth and home as we prepare ourselves and our spaces for the return of spring. Bridget's connection with Imbolc is no coincidence. As a goddess of fire and of the sun, her presence is really felt at this time of year when the cold days of winter are mostly behind us and we're beginning to welcome in that warmth and light of spring. On this day, an image or doll representing Bridget in her maiden form is created. It's dressed in white and placed in a small woven basket representative of a cradle. A crystal is then placed over her heart representing her purity and the goddess is invited into the home by the female head of the household by singing sacred songs and chants to welcome her. Now, I found loads of sources that pointed to this very specific custom, but I was unable to find any specifics on the type of crystal that was placed over the heart of this small maiden Bridget. Additionally, there's a reference in the Carmina Gadelica to Bridget's connection to La Librige, describing how a serpent came out of the mound here, the serpent being a symbol of healing that's long been linked to the goddess Bridget. And it's said that this serpent emerges from the mound early in the morning, each embolc in honor of the goddess. And if you know much about Ireland and the traditions of Ireland, there are no snakes or serpents in Ireland. So this would definitely be seen as something miraculous. One final Imbolc tradition to honor goddess Bridget is to leave a loaf of bread, a pitcher of milk, and a candle out for her on this day. In fact, in Avebury in Wiltshire in England, Bridget devotees climb Silbury Hill, a Neolithic earthen mound, to eat fig cakes and drink water in honor of Bridget. There are also lots of different offerings that you may want to leave for Bridget at the time of Imbolc. Bread is very common, especially freshly baked bread, bread served with lots of butter or berries, candles in one of Bridget's colors like blue, gold, green, or white, feathers, especially blue, white, or yellow, flowers like daffodils or dandelions, and especially snowdrops, herbs, which may be fresh or dried or brewed as an herbal tea, and we'll talk more about Bridget's association with herbs and herbal medicine a little bit later. 
You may also want to offer some incense, which would be not quite traditional, but something common to most modern spiritual practices. A fragrance like bergamot, cinnamon, or vanilla would be really nice. You could offer some music, especially harp music. Or an offering of water in a small bowl, especially if it's been collected from a spring or a fresh stream. We'll talk about Bridget's relation to both water and fire a little bit later on. And finally, you can offer a willow branch wand. So let's get to know the goddess Bridget a little bit more intimately, so you can understand why you may want to work with her along with your crystals. Bridget was seen as a powerful queen and belonged to the ancient Celtic tribe of gods, the Tua de Danann. And in the Laur Gawala Aran, she was identified as the daughter of the Dagda, the great father of the gods of the Celts, known as the chief of the gods. In other tales, Bridget was said to be the daughter of a Druid father and a Christian mother, who brought her from Ireland to the island of Iona, also known as the Druid's Isle. According to Celtic myth, when Bridget was born at sunrise in the town of Ahart, she ascended into the sky along with the sun, and that rays of fire and light shone forth from her head in a tower of flame that reached up to the heavens. The event of her birth was said to be so bright that the family household looked as if it were on fire. As an infant, she was fed the milk of a sacred cow from the Celtic otherworld, so she's still often associated with cattle and milk. It's said that Bridget looked after an apple orchard in the Celtic other world. Apples symbolize wisdom, healing, and magic. It's here that she learned to commune with the bees who would bring the magical healing nectar back to earth. Because of Bridget's connection to healing and to fertility, it's said that flowers or shamrocks would spring up from the earth in her footsteps wherever she walked. Additionally, Bridget's connection to cattle and livestock and her protection of domesticated animals, comes from the legend that she possessed two oxen, a boar and a sheep. These animals would cry out with warnings of protection if danger were near. Bridget is sometimes referred to as a triple goddess, but it would be more accurate to speak instead in terms of her three aspects. Bridget is seen as a keeper of the light and is often pictured holding a flame in the palm of her hand. The light from her flame warms the hearth of the home, it's the hearth fire, it heats the forge, it's the fire of the forge, and it sparks inspiration in poets, it's the fire of inspiration and healing. This flame is representative of all three of her aspects. Sometimes Bridget is even represented as three sisters or three mothers, but these are most commonly viewed as individual aspects of Bridget as a whole goddess. And this idea dates back to a reference to Bridget in Cormac's glossary written in the 10th century by Christian monks. The three aspects of Bridget are the goddess of healing and herbs, the goddess of smithing and building, which is often represented by the anvil and forge, and the goddess of midwifery and fertility of both people and of crops. First, let's talk about Bridget's aspect as the healer. In this aspect, Bridget is often shown with a satchel of healing herbs bees, and flowers. She's connected with the water element as she's strongly connected to natural springs and healing wells. Ancient healers and herbalists were keepers of great knowledge and wisdom, and it's through this aspect of Bridget that we also see her relationship to scholarship and learning, especially poetry and history, as well as her ties to visions, dreams, and prophecy, particularly augury. Here, Bridget is revered as a muse who sparks inspiration in poetry and song. In her second aspect, as a fertility goddess, Bridget is often associated with childbirth, corn, and other crops, and livestock. This is her aspect as the hearth keeper. Corn dollies are often made in her image and are called little breeds. In her fertility aspect, she's also called upon for protection, especially of mothers and children. It's said that Goddess Bridget leans over every cradle, protecting babies and children. It's here that we see Bridget's connection with the hearth and home in its fullness. Bridget's connection to the home, though, extends far beyond just fertility. She's also connected to cleansing through the elements of fire and water, as well as by weaving and embroidery and harmony. In her third aspect, Bridget presents as the Goddess of the Forge. 
Her connection to smithing and building is really predominant here, and Bridget's knowledge of metal smithing was said to be incredible. In one legend, she made a whistle that could be used at night to transport someone to be with another person. It's this aspect, the goddess of the forge, that's responsible for Bridget's connection to the strength and protection of warriors. It's in her role as goddess of the forge that Bridget oversees justice, law, and order. In fact, Bridget was also said to be the wife of an Irish king, and together they had three sons who all became famous warriors. So Bridget, at one time, was seen as a patron deity of warfare, and her warriors were known as the brigands. This lasted until one of Bridget's sons was struck down by the Celtic smith god, and upon her son's death, Bridget's grief was heard so far and wide that both sides left the battle, and instead of forging weapons, they forged a lasting peace instead. In some mythology, it's said that Bridget's grief for her son and her mourning for him created the first act of keening, which is like singing cries of grief and lament. Bridget later came to be seen as a symbol of peace and unity. So now that you have a very brief introduction to the three aspects of the goddess Bridget, I want to touch on some of the crystals that I use to connect with her. So I want to be clear, there are no historical sources, myths, or folklore that associate particular stones with the goddess Bridget, at least from my research. But I do want to share some of my favorite personal correspondences for her here. I've chosen these stones based on their energetic properties in relation to each of Bridget's three aspects. So I've chosen garnet and pyrite for Bridget as healer. Garnet for its deep red color related to the physical body, the physical plane, and pyrite because of its high iron content, which energetically supports healing of the human body. And we see this mimicked in the high iron content of human blood. In her aspect as hearth keeper, I like to use carnelian and citrine. Carnelian because of its really fiery transformational energy and citrine because of its golden color representing bread and grain that nourish us and nurture us. And finally, for her aspect as the goddess of the forge, I like to work with fire agate and ruby, both of which embody the intense, fiery, passionate energy of the forge. So how might you work with these crystals to honor the goddess Bridget? You could place one or more of them on your altar as an offering to the goddess. You could try holding them in your hands during meditation or during prayer to connect with Bridget. You could also gather some beads made of these stones and use them to create a set of devotional prayer beads for Bridget. Or you could try carrying one of these stones in your pocket or wearing it as a piece of jewelry to connect with her energy throughout the day. This can be a really helpful way to assist you in developing a deeper relationship with this goddess, having something that's kind of always there as a touchstone. You can also hold one or more of these stones in your hands for a few moments to connect with Bridget's energy before you perform any type of divination. Remember, Bridget was in some ways connected to oracle and prophecy, so this is especially helpful for any type of scrying divination done with fire or water, which both relate to her, to help you receive guidance from her in relation to your query. And finally, you can try creating a crystal grid to honor the goddess Bridget. So you can do this in the shape of an upward pointing triangle, which is a symbol of the fire element and it connects to Bridget's sacred flame. And you can use three of the same stone, whatever you're most drawn to, or you can choose one stone to represent each of Bridget's three aspects and invite her full presence into your space. You might even choose to place a statue of the goddess Bridget or one of her sacred symbols in the center of the grid to really anchor that energy in further. And if you'd like to see my own crystal grid in honor of the goddess Bridget, head over to the blog this week at loveandlightschool.com slash blog. I would also suggest checking out the book Stones of the Goddess by my dear friend Nicholas Pearson. There is an amazing Bridget's Cross grid in his book that I absolutely recommend you try out. So that book is Stones of the Goddess by Nicholas Pearson. And if you'd like to grab a signed copy of that book, you can head over to his website at 
theluminouspearl.com and just click on books at the top, find Stones of the Goddess, and Nicholas has included some links to lots of booksellers where you can find the book, as well as a link to his Etsy shop where you can get a signed copy of the book. So there are lots of different options for crystal grids devoted to the goddess Brigid. You can try out a simple one like the three crystal grid that I've shared here or go check out the amazing Bridget's cross grid in Nicholas's Stones of the Goddess book or you can even try your hand at creating your own intuitive crystal grid devoted to Goddess Bridget. Now I want to switch gears and talk about Bridget's role as a saint. So Bridget was long revered by the Celts in pre-Christian Ireland, but she was later converted to a saint by the Catholic Church, and we see this happen in about 453 CE. She's still honored across many of Ireland's sacred healing wells, which have been in use for thousands of years by both Christians and non-Christians alike. And I actually had the honor of visiting some of Bridget's holy wells when I visited Ireland in 2019. It was an absolutely magical experience, one that will stay with me for a long, long time. And if you'd like to see a little video of one of my devotional practices at one of the wells, you can also find that over on the blog at loveandlightschool.com slash blog and along with a little glimpse into the sacred holy wells devoted to Bridget in Ireland, you can also see some snippets of devotional practice to goddess Bridget from my last trip to Glastonbury to Avalon, which is in Somerset in England. And I'll actually be headed back there in just about two months with Nicholas Pearson to co-facilitate an amazing crystal retreat called The Sacred Stones of Avalon, A Crystal Pilgrimage to Reveal the Grail Within. Our retreat is definitely fully booked. However, if you want to get notified about details of our upcoming retreats, which I promise if you enjoyed this episode, you will really want to get notified of our next one, head over to sacredstonesretreat.com. You'll currently see the information about our Avalon retreat, but if you scroll down a bit, you can sign up to get on the wait list to be notified of all of the future details of our upcoming crystal excursions. So back to the goddess Bridget, the goddess was converted to a saint when members of the Christian church realized that it would be difficult, if not impossible, to convert the existing Celtic pagans to Christianity without a way for them to continue to worship their beloved mother goddess Bridget. The new saint Bridget of Kildare even kept most of her same correspondences as the Celtic goddess Bridget, including her connection to sacred waters and holy wells. Water, especially the water that flows at these sacred wells and springs, is symbolically linked to the Celtic otherworld and was seen as a portal or a gateway between realms. And the custom of throwing coins into a wishing well may even be linked to the goddess Bridget. It was thought that Bridget would reward those who made offerings to her, so coins and other silver offerings were often tossed into her sacred wells to curry favor with the goddess, and it's a tradition that lasts to this day. Even now, if you visit any of Bridget's sacred wells in Ireland, you'll see offerings of rosary beads, cludy ribbons, coins, candles, and so much more. All are left in honor of goddess Bridget. And in pre-Christian times, these wells were often decorated with flowers and greenery and were kept as holy spaces. It's said that it was Bridget who taught the people of Ireland about the healing properties of herbs and plants and how to care for cattle and livestock, as well as how to forge iron and smith tools. There's an ancient oak tree near Bridget's well in Kildare that was revered by the Druids, and this tree is said to mark the spot where this teaching and sharing of knowledge by Bridget was said to have taken place. This oak tree, which is now gone, unfortunately, is the site of an ancient gathering place of priestesses, or a monastery of nuns in the Christian version of the story, who each spent 30 years of their lives in devotion to Bridget. During the first 10 years, these priestesses received special training in the ways of the goddess. During the next 10 years, they would tend the sacred wells and the fertile lands of the goddess. 
And in their final 10 years, they would pass on their wisdom and knowledge by training others. Now we've discussed Bridget's connection to the water element, but I've also touched on how important fire is to this goddess. So let's discuss Bridget's holy flame. At her sacred well in Kildare, an eternal flame is still tended to this day by devotees of St. Bridget. The pre-Christian priestesses who started this tradition were known as the fire keepers. And according to an ancient Irish text, there were traditionally 19 priestesses who would tend this sacred flame, one per day for 19 days, by feeding it the sacred wood of the hawthorn tree, which has very deep spiritual meaning across Ireland and the British Isles. The number 19 was sacred to Bridget because according to the Book of Dun Cow, it represented the 19-year cycle of the Great Celtic Year and the time that it takes for the new moon to coincide with the winter solstice from one cycle to another. It said on each 20th day, the goddess Bridget herself tends to the flame to keep the fire burning brightly. The sacred flame was extinguished once in the 13th century and then again during the persecution of the monasteries by Henry VIII. And the flame wasn't relit until February 2nd, Candlemas, in 1996, when Sister Mary Minchin, a nun at Kildare, relit the flame with the intention of keeping it burning once again. And there's now a large tradition of flame keepers, hearth tenders, who keep this tradition going in their personal homes or in special temples or sacred spaces with candles that have been lit from that very flame. So the candle wick is lit from the flame at Kildare, extinguished, brought back to where the flame tenders do their devotional work and the flame is relit and passed on and passed on and passed on. It's also here at Bridget's well in Kildare that she was said to have agreed to heal two lepers. When they came to her seeking help, she asked them to bathe one another in the healing waters of the well until they were each healed. One leper bathed the other until he was healed. But after having been cured, the healed man, disgusted by the other, refused to bathe him in return. Upon discovering what had happened, Bridget was enraged and caused the man's leprosy to return. She then took pity on the shunned man and draped her cloak around his shoulders, healing him instantly. And her cloak, also known as a mantle, is very symbolic of her healing, of her nurturing, and of her care. Historically, there's also a record of a woman who was said to become the abbess of the Kildare Monastery upon Bridget's death. And this woman's name translates roughly to Daughter of Lou, and the Catholic list of saints lists her feast day as February 1st, or Imbolc, the primary feast day of Goddess Bridget. It's speculated that this woman was the historical figure associated with the Goddess Bridget and that Bridget actually may have been a title, meaning exalted one, rather than the name of the actual goddess. But this is still fairly contested in academic circles. So we've discussed a little bit about devotional practice to Goddess Bridget on this day of Imbolc. And one of the things that I like to do is create an altar to Goddess Bridget. In fact, I have one up year round, but it's around this time of year, I usually give it a really good refresh. So I thought I would share some of Bridget's symbols in case you'd like to create an altar of your own. And if you'd like to see a quick video of my altar, again, you can head over to the blog at loveandlightschool.com slash blog. I have a number of quick videos and informational graphics for you there this week. Since this post is so long, I wanted to make sure you had a lot of different ways to learn and understand and connect with the goddess Bridget. So her presence is often represented by displaying St. Bridget's Cross, or just Bridget's Cross, which is a cross woven of reeds. It can have three or four sheaves of wheat joined at the center, and it's hung in the home as a symbol of protection, fertility, abundance, and blessings. And when the pre-Christian goddess was converted to a saint by the Catholic Church, devotees to Goddess Bridget hung this woven cross in their homes as it said a secret way of worshiping her after Ireland became predominantly Catholic. And it's common to make a new cross each in bulk, take the old one down and replace it with a fresh one. And there are loads of great tutorials on YouTube 
um, with some step-by-step instructions on how to create your own Bridget's Cross, which I did a few years ago. I still have it hanging up in my space, and it was such a magical act of devotion to be able to create something like this. So if it's something you're interested in, I would encourage you to do what I did, pull on your wellies or your snow boots, go outside and gather some reeds or grasses, whatever you can find, and weave together your own magical Bridget's Cross. Some other symbols of Bridget include acorns, the anvil, apples, bees, brooms or besoms, cauldrons, a Celtic cross, cows, especially white cows, and uh, in particular it said a white cow with red ears, a corn dolly, daffodils, dandelion, ears of corn, ewes, fire, grains, hammers, herbs, lambs, the linnet or oyster catcher bird, a mantle, which again is a shawl or cloak, milk, nettles, oak leaves, rowan, seashells, serpents or snakes, especially two that have been intertwined in the caduceus symbol of healing, a shield, a spinning wheel, a stone, especially one that's bright and sparkling, the sun, swans, swords, the triple flame, especially the symbol of three flames within a heart, water, wells or springs, wheat, and the white willow tree. You may also want to incorporate some of Bridget's colors into your altar. Blue, green, gold, orange, red, white, and yellow are all sacred to the goddess Bridget. The best times to honor Bridget are at Imbolc on February 1st, Also at the time of the Rowan moon, which is the night of the full moon in February, as well as the time of the Willow moon, which is the night of the full moon in May. And then there's also the Celtic festival honoring Bridget as a corn or fertility goddess, which is on May 4th. Bridget also has very many alternative names and spellings of her name, and I've included those in the blog this week along with some links to some suggested further reading and my sources for this article and podcast. There's a Bridget of Ireland devotional, Sun Among Stars by Mail Bridge, Bridget's Healing, Ireland's Celtic Medicine Traditions by Gina McGarry, Bridget, Celtic Saint and Celtic Goddess by Joy Reichert, Bridget, Goddess, Druidess, and Saint by Brian Wright, Bridget, History, Mystery, and Magic of the Celtic Goddess by Courtney Weber. Bridget, Meeting the Celtic Goddess of Poetry, Forge, and Healing Well, which is in the Pagan Portal series. This is a book by Morgan Daimler. This is a highly, highly recommend. Morgan Daimler always does incredibly thorough research, is very authentic to the source material, and just gives great insight and perspective. So this is a highly recommend. There's also Bridget's Light, Tending the Ancestral Flame of the Beloved Celtic Goddess by Carol Crow and Laura Luella. And just an interesting side note, this is actually the book that I read just before deciding to take a spur-of-the-moment trip to Ireland with my mom, which is the trip where I visited all of Bridget's Wells, and you can see in the video over on the blog. This book is definitely a highly recommend. There's also Imbolc. Rituals, Recipes, and Lore for Bridget's Day, which is part of the Llewellyn's Sabbath Essentials series by Carl F. Neal. There's St. Bridget of Kildare, Life, Legend, and Cult by Noelle Cassane. St. Bridget, the Celts in the Early Irish Church by Justin R. McCarthy. Tending Bridget's Flame, Awakened to the Celtic Goddess of Hearth, Temple, and Forge by Lunea Weatherstone. And The Goddess Bridget by Russell Knowles. You can find links to those sources as well as more information over on the blog. Which brings us to the end of our discussion, so I'd like to leave you with this. May the fire of Goddess Bridget spark inspiration within you today and always. Do you feel intuitively called to work more deeply with your stones? To grow your confidence, knowledge, and connection to crystal energy beyond what you can learn on your own? Our award-winning Crystal Healing Certification Program will take you from crystal lover to a confident, certified crystal healer and help you discover your soul's path and crystal purpose. Go to crystalhealerschool.com.
www.thepowerofpowerpodcast.com to learn more. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you found a lot of value in today's show. If you want more information about anything I discussed in this episode, you can learn more over on the website at loveandlightschool.com slash blog. And if you did enjoy the show today, the biggest compliment you can give me is to leave a quick rating and a review over at loveandlightschool.com slash iTunes. It really means the world to me when you leave those ratings and reviews. It helps the show reach more people, which is really important if I'm going to keep making more episodes each month. And I want you to know, I read every single one of your reviews. I really appreciate it. And today I want to give a shout out to Adriana in Indiana, who says, Five stars, love this podcast. So happy I came across Ashley and all of her crystal knowledge I don't miss an episode. So Adriana, thank you so much for taking the time to leave that review. It really, really means the world to me. I'm very grateful for your time. So again, if you'd like to leave a review to help us get found by other listeners, head over to loveandlightschool.com slash iTunes. Again, it really, really does mean the world to me. And, you know, we do this podcast without any advertisers, any promotions, for outside products or websites or commercials or anything like that. So if you could help show your support by leaving a five-star rating and a review, I would be incredibly grateful. Again, loveandlightschool.com slash iTunes. And if you'd like to stay up to date with the show, make sure that you subscribe to the podcast by heading over to loveandlightschool.com slash listen, where you can see our most popular episodes, most recent episodes, and all of the different platforms where you can subscribe so you never miss a future episode. That brings us to the end of this show as part of the Love and Light Live podcast. I'm your host, Ashley Levy, and I'll be back with you in our next episode. Until then, crystal blessings. The Love and Light Live podcast is a production of the Love and Light School of Crystal Therapy. Connect with us online at loveandlightschool.com or on social at Love and Light School. The content provided on or through our website or podcast makes no claims for specific or general health or health results and should not be used to examine, diagnose, or treat any medical condition prescribe medications, make claims for specific or general healing or health results, or as a substitute for traditional medical treatment. For medical advice, you should consult a licensed healthcare specialist. For more information, please refer to the terms of use on our website at loveandlightschool.com.